All right, so this is a show where people of all ages have been like, Jeremy, you should watch Arrow. Watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it. And I had never watched it, but I'm going to be on the Masters of Web Comic Con panel this year with Manu Bennett, a.k.a. Slade Wilson from Arrow, a.k.a. Deathstroke. So I was like, I've never seen Arrow, so I guess I should do my homework and watch Arrow. I enjoyed it so damn much, I was like, now I want to talk about season one of Arrow. Arrow season one. Yeah, I haven't watched season two yet because it's not on Netflix, it's not out on Blu-ray, so all I have is season one. So Arrow's a show on the CW that is about the comic book character Green Arrow. Immediately I was like, you mean that dude who was a side character in Smallville? No, thank you. I enjoyed Smallville when I was younger, but now I'm like, older and I spend 10 weeks out of the year in a row in Westeros. I survived the Red Wedding. Pitch me on how a show on the CW about superheroes is gonna be good. But I guess I don't know everything and that's me jumping to conclusions because I actually had a good time with it. Because people never properly pitched to me how Arrow would be interesting and I will pitch it to you because I know you people. You're my people. This is how people should have described it to me. So the show starts out, you see Oliver Queen on this island. He's, he's been shipwrecked on an island for a few years. He has the long hair, the beard. He looks like Green Arrow as you would know Green Arrow. And he gets off the island and then back into civilization and he has a list of names and he's going to right the wrongs that his really corrupt ass family did. Yeah, he comes from a rich family. So imagine Bruce Wayne gets back and he's like, oh, Thomas Wayne was a dick. I have to right the wrongs and take out the people who, you know, screwed the city with him. And now he's on a total vigilante hunt for these people who have screwed his city. Seriously, in an awesome way. He will have them dead to rights with his bow and arrow and he'll be like, you, whatever your name is, you have failed this city and he'll kill them. Right there, I was like, you are not Bruce Wayne. Yeah, you may have gone away for a few years and came back completely efficient at killing things like Bruce Wayne, who never actually kills things. But the most intriguing part of Arrow is the revelation of the plot. It's like reverse loss. Yeah, you know how Flash has reverse Flash? This is reverse loss. On loss, they're trapped on an island, but every episode it shows flashbacks of them on the mainland and it expands their character and makes them interesting. In Arrow, he's on the mainland, but in every episode it shows flashbacks of him on the island and it expands his character and makes him interesting. It shows how he became so- I don't even know how he became so efficient at everything. The dude comes back speaking Russian. I was like, I, who, where are the Russians? Don't know, but somehow I'll find out one day. Maybe, if they haven't forgotten. Yeah, the first half of season one of Arrow is pretty episodic. I had heard that was the boring half of the season, but I had a lot of fun with it. It was just him going vigilante, taking out people who have screwed the city. That's fun to me. I like vigilanteism. But in the next few episodes after the first half, that's actually when I start backing up and going, whoa. People start finding out who Oliver Queen is and that he's the Green Arrow. And I was like, I don't want to, or the hood as they call him in this show, but I didn't want to see that. Keep the mystery. I don't want the mystery to be lost. However, in that mid season mark, that's when his adventure on the island gets a lot cooler. And that's when I'm like, actually I prefer it. Let's, let's see a lot more island shit. No smoke monster yet, but I'm banking on it. But then in the last few episodes of the first season, you're like, all right, there there's the whole overarching story that's gonna carry into season two and it was actually pretty intense and it left off on, yep, that's a cliffhanger. There's some of that love back and forth romance, love triangle nonsense in the show, but everything has a romance. Batman Begins had a romance. That's another thing. Maybe they borrowed a bit from Batman Begins for sure. From the tone, first of all, I like the tone. Oliver Queen, as I know him in the comic books, is this really sarcastic ass and I like that. In this show, he's not like that, but I get it. You wanna make him darker and brooding because people are into that shit now. You would have to get a really good actor to pull off that kind of comedy who's also pretty enough to get the chicks coming back. That's really hard to do. I get it. It's just easier to make him dark and brooding and it's also interesting, so why not? And the whole him being gone for a few years and then coming back. And then in the end there's this plot element in season one where I'm like that's like something that happened in Batman Begins and I don't know, maybe they just borrowed a bit from it because it's safe. Smart, yes. Yeah. Safe, yeah. But in that, I did like the tone a lot. The tone is one of the things that brought me into it. And I'm like, oh, okay, I I like this show. I want to see where the show goes. I'm not going to turn the show off. Let's just marathon the show. You think superhero show on the CW, you don't think the tone of this show. This show has the tone that I hope Gotham has. There's also not one unattractive chick in this show. Every female in the show, I swear to God, is hot. Hot chick, hot chick, hot chick, hot chick. Hot chick, hot chick. Even his mom is hot. Seriously, there's not one unattractive. Every time a female's on screen, I'm like, yep, you could be in a calendar. They could have a calendar called the Chicks of Arrow. It even has like Easter eggs. I heard everything. All right, everything I am going to say about season one of Arrow, I heard is amplified in season two. So when I say there are really cool comic book DC universe Easter eggs in season one, I know that there are tenfold in season two. I'm just saying as it stands, there are really cool ones in season one. Like there are these villains where I'm like, is that a real villain? I look it up on my phone. I'm like, yep, that's 
actually a villain. One of them I recognized from Arkham Origins. I was like, is that the dude from Arkham? It's the dude from Arkham Origins. To be honest, my main gripe with the show is something that the show couldn't escape because it's on the CW. In the sense that it's not on AMC or HBO, so it's going to be 23 episodes long. When you're dealing with 23 episodes in one season, you're gonna have downtime. You're gonna have episodes where it's like, it's gonna be episodic. It's not really relevant to the overall plot. It's gonna be filler. If you had 12 to 14 episodes per season, you'd have a really solid season because they'd be like, we have to use every episode to the fullest. Every episode would be optimized to be time efficient. You'd walk away going, there's just nothing irrelevant about that entire season. So season one of Arrow, I enjoyed a lot. It's a bit episodic, but episodic in that he's taken out dudes because he's a vigilante and that's still interesting as episodic as it may be. Maybe one of the elements that gets you through the episodic phase of this show is the fact that everyone's like, season two is so awesome. And I'm really looking forward to that shit. This show surprised me. I feel like it's convincing people to watch Arrow because it's not your common CW teen romance superhero show. It's like convincing people to watch Battlestar Galactica because it's not a normal sci-fi show on the sci-fi channel. It's like those arguments never go anywhere because everyone's always like, N yeah, they are. Watch the pilot episode because the pilot episode is a solid pilot episode. That was the episode where I was like, yeah, I want to watch more. Yeah, it started out as homework. So I would know the work of Manu Bennett when I meet him at Comic-Con, but I finished it as something I was enjoying doing. I marathoned all of season one in two days. And the fact that Slade Wilson didn't go full Deathstroke in this season kind of made it counterproductive to the reason I started this whole adventure. But as long as I enjoy my time and as long as I enjoy my 23 hours of television, it's not a waste to me. I don't have a rating for shows, but you can do what I did. I have Netflix and I watched season one on Netflix and I enjoyed watching it on Netflix. So Arrow season one, have you seen it? What did you think about it? Whatever you thought, comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you want to see more, click right here to see more.